So for the next bound resist that we're going to do is the accordion fold. Uh, so this creates those vertical or horizontal lines. Um, again, I like to bind mine pretty tight so that I have that, that very sharp difference. Between, and I really maintain this dark blue. You can always go ahead and fold it lighter or bind it lighter. I'm going to go ahead and use string. You feel free to use rubber bands. It just depends on your piece as far as um, how tightly you want to bind it. Um, and um, where it is if you're using it on, on clothing you have already made or like a fresh piece of fabric. So I've got my string and my scissors off to the side and I'm just gonna get started. So again, my piece is about 36 by 16 inches and I'm gonna just start by folding it. And you're really in control here. So if you wanna have very precise vertical lines, Go ahead and measure it out um, and iron each line. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and finger press mine. I find cotton finger presses really beautifully, even for denim. So, and then I'm gonna fold it back right along that same line I folded it the first time. Mind you, my cut wasn't perfect, so it doesn't quite go there, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna keep folding it, finger pressing until I have my whole piece folded. I know that I'm gonna have really sharp folds without the use of an iron because I'm gonna bind it really tightly with my string. You can pre-cut pieces of string too beforehand. Um, I probably should have done that, but it's okay. If you don't. keep folding it and I don't necessarily want ex you know my stripes don't have to be exactly perfect um, there's just kind of that beauty in shibori where you have the mark of the hand that's why I don't mind just finger pressing it versus using an iron and, and marking each line in particular because when we add the the piece to the bleach you know it the parts that are bound really tight we're not gonna have a lot of bleach enter, but the parts that aren't bound as tight, we will have bleach enter more. So we're already gonna have a little variation in the line, which is, I think, just quite beautiful. The mark of the hand, the handcrafted. So this one doesn't take necessarily as long. Again, um, you can always combine these techniques. So if you uh, see some techniques that I'm doing or if you think of other ways to bind, absolutely. What I love about this process is I'm taking all these, you know, additive processes like shibori and tie-dye, which you can argue is a form of shibori. <laughs> and um, instead of adding dye to bound pieces, I'm removing color with the diluted bleach. There we go. Almost there. Again, I'm gonna keep finger pressing this just to keep it. If I want just to start, put a rubber band at the end because I'm, I could just finger press all the way down here. Oh, 
Then at this side, whoop, that one's broken. And then depending on how tight I bind this again, it's gonna depend on how much bleach gets through and color is lifted. So I have my two ends bound like so. I'm gonna bind it, I don't know. Let's say I wanna get a little bit more color, especially since I you know, finger pressed it. I'm gonna go ahead and say maybe every four inches I will add a tie. You can use rubber bands too. I just find it easier to tie. So maybe I'll start my rubber band here. Use my grid spout. Say one, two, three, four. Again, it can be as exact as you'd like it to be. This is your project. You are the designer. It's really fun to explore too. So I, I highly recommend doing two pieces at the same time. One with like super tightly bind, tight bindings and one with uh, looser bindings, just to see that variation that you can get. Or even in the same piece, go ahead and um, Go ahead and bind some tighter and some looser so that way you can really get some good variation and the string itself will act as another bind and resist so everywhere on the part that's going to go in the bleach that we have the string will also have like a little interruption in the bleach stripe that we're getting okay that's about four inches about another four, it's right there. And this is another great, the binds are really great for uh, using in your bucket. So if you don't have as much space or you don't have like a, a tub, you just have a shower and a small sink, you can uh, use a bucket. And if you're sensitive to fumes, always go ahead and do this outside too. Make sure that you're using safe disposal. I wouldn't put diluted bleach water just in my garden personally. I'd rather put it down the drain. But I don't know if it's okay or not. It's not something I've investigated. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments. Clearly can work on my nuts. There we go. And then about another four inches. Just the ribbon for the last four inches, and I will call it that. Again, if you want to have really, really tiny stripes, like I'm going for, I'm going to go ahead and um, wind this up. Also, then it fits in my bucket nicely. You don't have to do this part. You can just put in part of it. It depends on how you add this to your bleach is how you're gonna see lift. I'm gonna go ahead and have all these folded edges go face down into my diluted bleach water so that I have a nice stripe along all these folded edges. Something like that. And then I can go ahead and add a rubber band. 
So I have another piece bound here. Um, I can bind it tighter if I want again, just like I did the scrunch, or I can bind it like so just lightly, which is a little bit of resistance so that I can get a little bit of a wider stripe. But again, everywhere that there's gonna be one of these strings, that's gonna act as another bind as long as it's tight. This one feels a little loose, that feels a little loose too. No, it's fine um, because it's really these folds that are gonna keep all the fabric in between the fold is going to uh, resist the bleach itself. So you won't have as much bleach getting into those folds. And now I'm gonna go ahead, I can add this to my bleach. Um, once I have a vertical stripe, I can do the same manner in the other direction. I can fold it in different ways and add it to bleach again. And I can get, create a piece after I wash and dry it, like something like this. So these are all of those very fine vertical long folds that I did. Again, I did this by hand, finger pressing this. And then um, once I was done with it, I opened it up and I wanted to have some contrasting uh, horizontal folds and I loosely bound it. So this is the tightly bound, very tightly finger pressed and knotted. And then these pieces are loosely bound. So I folded it in half like so. You can basically follow all of these fold lines, fold it in half again, looks like I folded it this way. So this line is lighter, meaning that it was uh, folded. And then something like that. Um, and probably trying to recreate my fold. So I could see all of the area that I put in the bleach here, like so. So I I put a, a rubber band around it. So again, not too tight, just bound it so it stays together so that I got a lot more of that bleach in there. If I wanted to get a little bit less and I didn't want to have it too bound, I could put it the rubber band a little bit closer and then I dropped it in the bleach bucket like so, so that the, the diluted bleach was only along this edge. And it spread because it wasn't as tightly bound. And you can do lots of folds. So you don't, don't feel like you are restricted to just these vertical horizontal folds. You can do triangular folds and it really depends on how you fold it on the different designs that you'll create.